Hey there, homeowner. Rich from Solar Microscope here. I help educate homeowners like you so you can look under the microscope at solar before you decide to get it for your home. Now, I personally don't sell solar, but I've helped over two and a half billion people through my simple YouTube ads. I've advertised for thousands of solar companies, and I've learned a lot about the industry since doing that. I'm not here to give you biased information, but just to help you make a more educated decision if solar panels are right for you. So you've all heard the old saying, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. In the same way, those who don't know about the horror stories where people have had bad experiences with solar are doomed to make the same mistakes. Now, I should say that 95% of people who get solar love the panel. They don't regret the decision whatsoever. They've saved so much money, but it's important to understand and learn from the 5% who've had a bad experience to make sure you don't fall prey to the same result. So what are the most common mistakes to avoid when looking into solar panels for your home? Number one is not understanding what you're getting. Now, make sure you watch more of my videos so you really understand how solar panels work and the different ways you can obtain solar. Deciding whether you want to lease the panels or own the panels is a good start. If you're older and retired and have no taxable income, then you may not want to own or finance the panels because number one, you can't take advantage of the federal tax credit because you have no taxable income. And number two, you may not be staying in your home long-term or you may pass on the debt to your heirs. But So that's where a good option is to lease the panels. You automatically get immediate savings and you don't have to worry about losing out on those other benefits. So if you're still working and you expect to pay taxes in the year that you get solar, then owning the solar panels may be a better decision if you plan on staying in your home. So make sure you watch the videos on the federal tax credit, the government incentives, and the differences between owning and leasing solar so you can get a better understanding. Now, the second thing is not planning on staying in your home for at least five to seven years. If you don't plan on keeping your house for at least five to seven years, then solar may not be a good fit for you, it may not be worth qualifying, even if you do qualify. Although you can experience immediate savings savings in month one, in most cases, if the real estate market were to take a downturn and then you sell your house at an inopportune time, then the next homeowner that buys your house is really going to benefit the most from solar because you're going to have to pay off a loan balance at the time of the sale. And if you sell the house for less and don't really get the increased value because of the solar panels, then you know it's not worth getting solar if you're not planning on staying in your home for at least some time. Third thing is you know, not giving at least 12 months of energy usage to your solar designer. A common mistake homeowners make is that they only share one or two months worth of electric bills with their solar designer. So what they do is they kind of do guesswork on like how much energy you might produce throughout the year. Well, you don't want to design a complex technology system based on guesswork. And a lot of solar companies won't even take that guesswork. But unfortunately, there are some solar professionals who, you know, they care more about the commission than they do about your home. And they'll try to come up with an estimate that may not necessarily be accurate. So you definitely want to watch the video on how to find a trustworthy solar consultant and make sure that you're working with someone that's a reliable company, trustworthy company, and make sure you get them 12 months of your energy usage. So if you don't share all of that relevant data with them, it's possible that they may install too many panels, which means that you're going to lower your amount of savings, or it's possible that they'll give you too few panels. Now, if you get too few of panels, that means you're not going to offset all the energy you consume. And that's going to make it so that you have a solar payment and an electric bill payment. And that's what a lot of people have experienced and why they have bad results. They don't think the solar works, but in reality, they just didn't give all the relevant information to the solar professional to make the most educated decision for their home. I mean, the fourth thing is, is making sure the solar installation company has a good track record and will stay in business. Now, some solar companies are local and that may be a factor when making your decision, but I don't think it's as important as knowing the company has done a good amount of installs in your state, at least 300 to 500 at a minimum. So make sure you choose a company that has a phenomenal warranty as well. I've heard really good things about Solar Insure, which is a company that many solar companies use to extend their panel and inverter warranties beyond the normal 25 year timeline. They also cover in the event of like your roof being penetrated from a storm, which is a good thing to consider as well. They also have a phenomenal customer service department who can answer most questions for you after the solar is installed. And if the solar company ever goes out of business, which has happened before, they will continue to service your solar panels. And now the fifth thing is making sure you don't overuse energy after solar is installed. Many homeowners don't realize that the solar system was designed based on their current 12 month energy usage. So if you install a pool after you get solar, then the amount of energy your home will consume 
volume will obviously go up significantly. You'll need to add more panels later to offset the increased amount of energy usage. Even something not as drastic, for instance, if you don't use appliances or lights during the day, but then you start working from home, your energy usage is probably going to go up. So many homeowners think that the solar panels stop working after a number of years, but what they don't realize is that they just greatly increase the amount of how much energy they were consuming. Just because your solar panels greatly reduced or even eliminated your electric bill, don't forget to turn off your lights when you're not using them or to unplug necessary appliances. Use LED lights to reduce energy consumption. Don't just start overusing energy because you think you can. So I hope this video was helpful for you in how to avoid the most common solar installation mistakes for homeowners. Like I said, I don't sell solar. I have no dog in this race, but I do have access to a network of reliable independent solar consultants and companies that I can connect you with if you'd like to get a customized solar design for your home. If you'd like to learn more, go to solarmicroscope.com and make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, watch more of the videos because they're great educational resources for you to make the best decision for solar. So you can look under the microscope and make sure it's the right fit for you. And I'll see you on the next video.